In the first video on the 18th century artisan show, uh, we concentrated on the actual antique guns that are available at the show on display and for sale. So in this installment, what I'd like to do is show you some of the work of the contemporary artists who are recreating the 18th century today. And also to give you a little information on how the show got started and why it is the way it is. I'm here with Art DeCamp, and Art is one of the organizers of the Lewisburg uh, 18th Century Artisan Show. And Art, could you tell us a little bit about the show? Sure, Mike. We were, a group of us were sitting around about 10 or 11 years ago, and we thought it would be pretty neat if we could begin start uh, start up a show where we could have only the finest artisans that we knew uh, create a show where we could give them the opportunity to sell their items. And we wanted a show that was not a traditional gun show, so to speak. We wanted to have a wide array of 18th century period period, accurate, correct artisans that make furniture, pottery, paintings, powder horns, bags, rifles, and various other related accoutrements to the 18th century. Uh, so we, we looked around for a venue, we stumbled into the country cupboard here, uh, and it's been a tremendous success that we're celebrating our 10th anniversary show this year. We're very proud of that. Uh, and it's different than most shows because it's a juried show. Artisans are invited based on their skill and the actual type of things they make. Besides being an organizer of the show, Art is a rifle maker of some note, and you can see some of the beautiful work that Art's done here. And there's a room, you know, that's dedicated just to components for those of us who like to build our own flintlock rifles. Now you can see a lot of the big vendors from Pennsylvania here. Jim Kibler of Kibler's uh, Long Rifles was in the components room and uh, Jim has been making probably the best value kit in muzzle loading. It's a southern uh, mountain rifle, 42 inch barrel, long rifle, full stock, beautiful work, uh, and it basically is going for a thousand dollars. And it's a kit that anybody with a little bit of skill can build. And, and I think this is a great thing for the industry. So if you're interested in building your first kit and you want a real traditional style rifle, I'd recommend you look up Jim. Uh, we're in here in one of the main exhibit halls for the contemporary artisans. So these are the people that are recreating the past today. Well, I'm here with uh, Chris Lombach, and he happens to live pretty close to me. And not only is he an outstanding gun maker, but he's an engineer by trade. And uh, he's working on a pretty interesting project. So, Chris, why don't you tell us what you're doing? Yeah, we're in the process of uh, putting together some, some locks. Um, got the first set of, if I can get it apart here, of mold blocks here. These will go out next week to the molder so that the molder can burn some cavities in them. And uh, so we can start producing some waxes to make some locks similar to what are currently being made today, but with different styles and uh, to bring some different locks out to the market. Yeah, it's a beautiful lock right there. We have some of the wares here from Matthew Stein, a woodworker. Some beautiful boxes. It's been centered again to form the piece. Push down here. Open it. And I can begin to pull up the sides. <laughs> what I'm doing is thinning this out as I go. I'm going to change the shape here. Is this the only room? 
And um, now this this would be fine as is, but I can make it into a picture just by doing this. Now there's a spot. These are some of the finished goods that Eric Steinhagen makes. Uh, in fact, I bought a pottery canteen from him, very similar to the yellow one in the foreground here. All right, I'm here with Tim Williams, my buddy and one of the best rifle smiths I know. And the gun that he's holding is a 58 caliber Schroyer rifle, which is a gorgeous gun. And Tim actually used this to take a moose this year in Canada. And uh, tell me about that moose. How big was that thing? It was big. Uh, probably <laughs> around 1,200 pounds. And how many 12 points? points? 12 points. And about a 38 inch spread, I think. All right, look at the detail work on this. That is a beautiful rifle. Uh, if you've seen my videos, you've seen Ken Gahagan's Fowlers and rifles a good bit, but uh, that's not all there is to them. Got some beautiful knives as well. Some of the beautiful work made by Brian Lamaster. Right, I'm over here with Mitch and Robin Yates, and Mitch is not only a superb gun builder, and I do mean superb, but he is also an excellent silversmith. And he specializes in authentic 18th century designs for trade silver. And he just makes some beautiful pieces. This is my friend, uh, John DeWald, and he is a master horner, uh, powder horn maker in the Honorable Company of Horners. And that uh, is his master's gorget uh, which is awarded to masters in the company he does some beautiful work and the piece i'm showing you right here I, I find interesting because i'm an eagle scout and this is a commission he had uh, to make for a young man when he was presented with his eagle and i think that's great some beautiful hunting pouches here there were quite a few hunting pouches uh, at the show when i happened to be in the market for one uh, i'll show you what i got later on Well, I love looking at the beautiful pieces of wood. Here's a gorgeous Hawkins style rifle. Just beautiful figure and silver inlay. Well, I'm here with Clay Smith, and he's going to tell us about a really unique fouling piece. I'll let you have a look at this thing. So what's the story behind this, Clay? Well, basically, it's an Indian trade gun. Yeah, the original was made by John Bumford out of London, and the original now resides in Colony Williamsburg uh, Collections. Uh, the only known one with vines painted on it as a decoration. Of course, the original is so dark now from where in age it's hard to see the vines, but with ultraviolet light you can see it. So I copied this one as it would have looked probably new, light finish. Uh, this one that I made also has a hand forged barrel profiled off the original, although I left it four inches shorter than the original gun, uh, just because I like a 42 inch barrel instead of 48. Uh -huh. um, but it's, it's just a very lightweight, very cheaply made. It's all sheet metal parts, the butt plate's just nailed on. Well, but, uh, a little it's, bit fancier butt plate than you'd see on most trade guns. That's beautiful. Thanks. It might be uh, designed for a chief's grade type gun.
This is Mark Thomas, another phenomenal craftsman. Uh, this guy is an absolute top-notch riflesmith. And I don't know if this picture will come across as well on your screen as it should, but this buttstock, this entire stock, is just a phenomenal piece of wood and beautifully made. Uh, Mark is a master of the hand scrape finish and you almost have to hold this gun to even believe it. It's great. But besides being a gun maker, uh, Mark is kind of a jack of all trades. He can make horns and, and he is one of the best engravers I know. And you can see this folding knife is beautiful. Uh, and he does some phenomenal work. And I'm going to show you kind of a special piece in a minute. Um, and uh, it's well worth looking at. Well, I'm not going to tell you how much this knife costs. Alan Martin is another top craftsman from Pennsylvania who was at the show. The beautiful Lancaster County style rifle that Alan Martin is working on. It's in the white right now. You can see the really great molding. Just a beautiful rifle. This is really going to be a looker when it's finished. Well, this is the bag I bought at the show. It's made by Jim Dell of the Geneseo Trading Company. And I bought this specifically for my smoothbore. And uh, you'll be seeing it sometime in the next year in an article in Muzzleloader Magazine. So keep your eyes open for it. I'm going to close out this video with a photographic montage of many of the crafts that you would have seen at the 18th Century Artisans Fair. And if you think these pictures just go by too fast... Uh, the only thing I can say is, if you want to see more, you're just going to have to get yourself down to Lewisburg next year and attend the show yourself. And I think you'll be glad that you did.